medcram.com. Okay, well, welcome to another MedCram lecture. We're going to talk about Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, otherwise known as WPW. And let's talk about the conduction system so we can explain what's going on here. So here we have the electrical conduction of the heart, and as you know, the sinal atrial node is where the pacemaker usually sits up here. And it depolarizes throughout the atrium. But before it goes down to the ventricle, all of these pulsations, electrical conduction, goes to the AV node, which sits right here. Basically, this is the only pathway for electrical conduction to go down into the ventricles normally. And as you know, this is insulated. So there's an insulative layer here so that depolarization of the atria don't go down at all into the ventricle. Now, that's important because, as you know, the AV node here only allows a specific rate of conduction to go through it. There's a depolarization and repolarization and then a refractory period where by which an additional depolarization is not going to be allowed in straight through. And that's kind of a safety mechanism because as you know in atrial fibrillation up here in the atria, the atria are contracting far more than 400 beats per minute. And in that situation, imagine 400 beats per minute being directly transmitted down to the ventricles. I mean that would be fatal. So the AV node does serve a very good purpose in controlling that. Okay, so you know then that there is only one way to the ventricle. Well, unless, unless of course, you have WPW, which in this situation, you have a congenital abnormality called the bundle of Kent, which basically is a bridge which connects the atria with the ventricle. And so now, instead of the electricity, the conduction, going down and sweeping in this direction, going everything's going to the AV node before it can go down into the ventricle, now you have all of that, yes, but you can also take an accessory pathway, it's called the Bundle of Kent, and you can go down into the ventricle directly depending on what kind of congenital abnormality this is. So you can quickly see here that there's going to be some issues. This is still happening just like it normally does. But if this accessory pathway is functional and it's actually conducting electricity, you can see that the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to excite the musculature of the ventricle. And as such, you're going to go ahead and get depolarization of the ventricular myocardium early before it occurs through the Hisperkinji system. And we'll show you what that looks like on the EKG, and that'll make sense. Now, because there is depolarization of the ventricular myocardium, you may see a slightly longer QRS complex. So basically, if you were to look at this, this is the kind of situation that you're going to see. You're going to see a normal P wave, but Normally what you would see is you would see a normal QRS and then a T wave, right? But in this situation, you're gonna see a little bit more than that because again, here's this accessory pathway that's coming over and so you're gonna to start to see depolarization early. And so this curving up is known as a delta wave. And that is pretty characteristic of WPW. So if you see a delta wave, think about WPW. Also notice that the PR interval here to here is going to appear to be smaller because of this delta wave. So let's take a look at some real examples of what this looks like on an EKG. So this is a patient with WPW. You can see right away that you've got this delta wave here. It's pretty much all over the place. You can see this delta wave, of course, going in the opposite direction because we're talking about AVR. Here you can see a delta wave. Here you can see a delta wave. And again, we're talking about that pre-excitation of the ventricle. So delta waves in front of all of these QRS complexes. Here's a nice delta wave as well. Delta wave as well, okay? So these are all delta waves consistent with WPW. Okay, and as we mentioned, this is a congenital problem, and people can present with this at all ages, as children, as adults. They usually have 
you know, symptoms of cardiomyopathy, shortness of breath, things of that nature. There are three areas where you can run into problems with ventricular tachycardia. The first one, as we were talking about, is that this bundle of Kent, which is an accessory pathway, can have rapid conduction in an antegrade fashion. So you can imagine that if somebody went into atrial flutter, for instance, or they went into atrial fibrillation, that all of those atrial contractions will be transmitted perfectly through the bundle of Kent and right on down into the uh, myocardium. And that would be a one-to-one -one conduction. So you know that atrial flutter waves, for instance, are sawtooth, and they are gonna be going at about 300 beats per minute. And so you can imagine a ventricular rate of 300 beats per minute is gonna to lead to basically ventricular fibrillation, and uh, that could be a fatal arrhythmia. And so number one, the first problem that you can run into here is basically anterior grade conduction because there is no, no refractory period. It just keeps conducting. It's like a wire basically that's short circuiting it. The second possibility is that some of these bundles of Kent, believe it or not, will actually have an automatic foci in it, just like a pacemaker. And it may decide to go off and send a signal down into the ventricle, and that could cause tachycardia. Yet, there's another way an accessory pathway can cause problems. Sometimes, these pathways can conduct exclusively in the retrograde direction. In other words, not from the atria to the ventricle, but from the ventricle to the atria. This is called a concealed accessory pathway because you don't see the typical WPW pattern of a delta wave in a short PR. Now, can these cause problems? Absolutely. For example, you could have a sinal atrial node depolarization causing contraction going to the AV node, going down the his Purkinje system, and then all the way to the end. And then it signals the bundle of Kent and transmits the signal back up and you have a re-entrant tachycardia. And uh, that would be a problem in that situation. It would be narrow complex, but it would be re-entrant and it would be going through the AV node. So back and forth, back and forth. I think probably one of the more testable questions that you would see on a test regarding this is regarding specifically atrial fibrillation. So what happens if somebody has WPW and they go into AFib? Well, you know, that there's gonna be multiple contractions going on up here, greater than three, 400, 500 beats per minute, and it may be very, very rapid. So the thing is, is that these are gonna be transmitted down into the AV node, which is right here, but also through the bundle of Kent into the ventricle. What we don't wanna do, and this is really important, what we don't wanna do is we don't want to block the AV node, if there is a atrial fibrillation with wide complex, because if it's a wide complex, then we know it's going through the accessory pathway and it's pre-exciting down here. If it's a narrow complex, completely narrow, then we have no problem giving AV nodal blockers because we know that it's going through the AV node. But if we have atrial fibrillation with WPW and there's kind of a widened QRS, meaning it's using the accessory pathway, then if we use a beta blocker, or if we use specifically a calcium channel blocker, it's gonna block only this AV node and it's gonna have no effect on the accessory pathway. And in that situation, this could turn into ventricular fibrillation and death. So I think they want you to know that on tests. They wanna make sure that you understand that. So remember this, WPW with atrial fibrillation, you really wanna get them out of atrial fibrillation as quickly as possible. So if the patient is unstable, you need to go to DC cardioversion, basically shock, okay? Synchronized cardioversion. Okay, now, if they are stable, then don't use the non-dihydroperidine calcium channel blockers like verapamil and diltiazem and things like that. That's just gonna make the heart rate go faster and they may actually go into ventricular fibrillation. What you ought to be using is, if they're stable, then you want to use medications like procainamide or amiodarone.
So that is the key. Now let's go back one more time and look at an EKG of WPW. And you can see again, delta waves, delta waves, very short PR interval, delta waves. Well, I hope this WPW video has been helpful to you. If you want a comprehensive EKG review, however, go to medcram.com where you'll see this video with quiz questions and also a comprehensive review of EKG. And if you type in this coupon code, you'll get a discount on the entire series. I'll see you. Go to medcram.com.